Greetings, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today's video carries a profound and crucial message from Archbishop Pagano, conveyed through Archbishop Pagano. We wholeheartedly encourage each of you to watch this message in its entirety. As believers, we believe that this message holds the potential to touch hearts and contribute to the salvation of souls. May you be blessed and inspired as you join us in receiving this divine guidance. Amen. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your divine love. Send forth your Spirit that we may be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who, by the light of the Holy Spirit, instructed the hearts of the faithful, Grant that by the same Holy Spirit, we may be truly wise and always enjoy your consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. Message of the Most Holy Virgin Mary to Archbishop Pagano, August 23, 2023. Your digestive fires, if they have to move, these pancreas are needed. Circulation must happen, nutrients must spread across the body, wastes have to be removed from the cellular level. For everything to happen, you need movement. If you stop the movement, then you will see the body will not be able to sustain life. So, whether the flow is full or restricted or constipated, flow is the aspect we are looking at. If you generate gases below the navel, that is, if you eat certain types of foods like potatoes and other tuberous substances, you will generate gas below the navel. Once you generate gas there, your prana between the navel and the pit of the throat will not function as it should, and the dynamism levels in your system will go down. This is one reason those who wish to meditate, those who are students, and those who need to focus their minds and stay awake for long periods of time should not eat those substances. This is happening across the world today as the fools think they're becoming more and more modern, their food gets older and older. Fresh food is for the uncivilized. If you're very civilized, you must go to a superstore, buy a box, there's a plastic wrap, take it and throw it, knowing fully well it cannot biodegrade, and the can is made of something else, usually plastic or aluminum or whatever. If you want, you can heat it in the microwave, which is one more bad thing you're doing, and eat this, maybe minimum 3 months old. No, it was in the refrigerator, it is preserved, and they put preservatives so that it doesn't go bad. That is a double mistake. Now, in the yogic tradition, if you cook anything, maximum within one and a half hours, you must consume it. If there are certain types of items, up to four hours is okay. Beyond that, you don't touch it, doesn't matter how tasty it is. You don't touch anything because then you will develop gases in the system. Gas is not only in the stomach that you will feel, obviously, but you will develop values in the system which will work against your pranav, that means your respiratory action and your thought process, and your sense of smell will get lowered over a period of time. When you cook the fruit to digest the food, all the ingredients necessary for digestion are not in the body alone, the food also brings the enzymes. When you cook the food, you are largely destroying these enzymes. Minus the enzymes when you eat, now the body has to struggle to reconstruct that part that has been destroyed, and then only it can digest normally. First one and a half hours after eating, it tends to take the body down. After that, slowly it recovers. So, food is for energy, but we are making the food in such a way that it takes away energy in the first one and a half hours. Only after that slowly it comes back. Anyway, however good your digestive process is, still you can never reconstitute all the enzymes that we have destroyed by cooking. Only partly we can do that. When we say fruit, we must understand fruit is one aspect which nature itself intends to be felt. 
Suppose you are ill in a hospital, let's say you're in a hospital bed, nobody brings you chicken biryani, isn't it? They'll bring fruits because even your friends and relatives understand that okay, you're eating all that, you got sick, at least now you eat sensibly. That's a message. Fruit can do miraculous things to the body. Sufficient consumption of fruit can do great things to the system. One can become very alive and active, no matter what is your lifestyle. The fruit that you get in the market today, we don't know what it is filled with. There is a little bit of a problem. There is no way you can eat anything today which is not chemically infested. If you're eating very organic food, it's little organic chemicals they're using. It's come to that place, it's very difficult to eat something that's just grown in the wild forest. You can pluck out something and eat that's very, very little. Not even a small percentage of people are capable of eating that anymore. It's all from the marketplace, and what goes into the marketplace is all about more, not about what. Because I clearly noticed this, the kind of country fruits that we used to eat when we were young and today, the farm-grown fruits that are coming to us, even in India here, it's another matter altogether. Even in India, they're not the same. They're much bigger, rounder, better looking, but this is like Botox. This doesn't work, I can clearly feel it's not the same level of strength and aliveness. And it's simply because this is made for the market, not for the men. And these fruits are essentially made for the market. This doesn't mean that they're totally a waste, but they don't have the same nutrient that it used to have. So, we may have to fortify it with some amount of other food. We must check and see what kind of fruits you're exposed to, and seasonally there are a variety of fruits. It's very incredible that what kind of fruits the land produces at a certain time is most suitable for the system. There's a lot of study about this, how for those seasons when it's cold, when it's hot, when the moisture is very high, the right kind of fruit comes out of the earth. If you're eating from that area, but now you're eating fruit that comes from New Zealand, this is another matter. If you're eating from the land around you, you will see the right kind of fruit is coming to you at the right season. It's the best thing to eat at that time. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we come to the conclusion of today's reflection, let us take a moment to center ourselves in the profound peace that comes from embracing the Holy Trinity. May this inner peace be a guiding light on our journey towards enlightenment. Let us extend our gratitude to Archbishop Vigano for sharing this inspiring message that has touched our hearts. In the spirit of spreading the love and wisdom we've received, let us make an effort to share this message with others. By doing so, we contribute to the collective journey of spiritual growth and understanding. As we bid farewell to this moment of reflection, let us join together in the prayer of St. Michael the Archangel and the Hail Mary, seeking the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, conceived without sin. And now, dear friends, before we part ways, let us express our appreciation by heading to the comment section and offering our thanks to Archbishop Vigano for his words of wisdom. Your engagement and support are powerful ways to encourage the spreading of divine messages. Finally, if you found solace and inspiration in this message, please take a moment to hit the like button and share it with those who may benefit from its uplifting words. May the blessings of the Lord be upon us all and our families. Amen.